All right, so here we go. We have the WrestleMania pay-per-view buy rates from WrestleMania 1 all the way until 29. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty easy list to find. If you Google WrestleMania buy rates, you'll, get a, you'll pretty much see the exact same list pop up a million times. And, uh, yeah, this looks pretty accurate, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, analyze it. And, uh, yeah, th these are really fun videos to see which WrestleManias uh, were successful and, and some which weren't. And uh, so, yeah, let's let's start off with uh, WrestleMania 1 through 4. I, I mean, these really aren't worth talking about. They're on closed-circuit television. Um, with WrestleMania 3, they have 450,000 on closed-circuit, and then they did another 400,000 on pay-per-view. So, obviously, that was a successful event. But the interesting thing here is you see the drop-off at WrestleMania 4, there's only a list of uh, 175,000 on closed circuit. There's no pay-per-view number. But what this tells you is that there is uh, uncertainty with the WrestleMania 4 tournament, uh, which was a dreadful tournament to sit through. I, I, I enjoyed the ending with, uh, you know, Savage winning the tournament. They had a great moment at the end with him and Hogan uh, forming the Mega Powers. Uh, you know, Savage celebrating with Elizabeth. That that is a great WrestleMania moment. And you know, it's it's not a terrible WrestleMania from top to bottom. There were some things I liked about it, but God, the the undercard of that tournament was just dreadful. And uh, you know, I, I guess people. Uh, didn't know what to expect in the finals. I mean, they promoted Hogan versus Andre. Uh, I think it was like a second round match. So you knew they were going to get that. But you didn't know what you were going to get in the main event. There, there wasn't a clear defined, uh, you know, main event. They, they had the whole thing with, uh, DiBiase actually buying the, uh, uh, WWF champion, championship. And then they, uh, they stripped him of the title and then they vacated it. So there we go. I, I definitely want to do a 1988 pay-per-view rewind down the road. I know some people probably don't care about 1988 because it was almost 30 years ago, but uh, I, you know, I, I definitely do want do want to do one for 88 uh, when the time comes. So uh, look out for that. But yeah, WrestleMania four. I, I don't know. The, the number doesn't show that it's it's a successful event, but uh, maybe someone can uh, argue argue that and give me another number down the road because there's no there's no pay-per-view buy rate there. It's just a closed circuit buy rate. Uh, I'm sure the the event did pretty well on VHS. So ne next up, we go to WrestleMania Five. Woo! Wow, man, this looks pretty good. Seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand buys. That that's extraordinary for the time. I, I remember Hogan uh, got a great bonus. That he got one point two million dollar uh, bonus for that show. So that that shows you how well that did. Um, I think Trump, you know, Trump hosted that WrestleMania. I think he was a lot more happier with WrestleMania five than four. Uh, obviously, there was a clear defined main event for the championship. Great build up, great storyline. Uh, everything worked right there. I think it proved that Savage and Hogan were both uh, draws at, at that time. So we go to WrestleMania six, and you see almost a two hundred thousand two hundred thousand uh, dollar decrease. So WrestleMania six only gets five hundred and fifty thousand buys. You have Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior in the Sky Dome. The only thing I could talk about is uh, as, as far as maybe why there was a drop off. Uh, maybe some people uh, didn't like the fact that it was babyface versus babyface. Maybe they didn't feel the heat and the animosity between them. And maybe that's why. It did. Maybe, uh, and at the same time, I, I think as we move away from the 80s, the business wasn't quite as hot. When you go to uh, 90, 91, when you compare it to 87, 88, 89, I think Hogan was a little bit more hotter in the late 80s than the early 90s. Maybe you want to look at the decrease because of that. Now, when we get to WrestleMania 7, this is a little bit puzzling to me. Uh, if you watch WrestleMania 7, they, they announce on commentary, Gorilla Monsoon announces that this is the largest pay-per-view audience in uh, pay-per-view history, but you see the number is only 400,000. So something's not right here. Either this number isn't right, or maybe, um, you know, I'm not calculating it correctly. Maybe the pay-per-view uh, system was calculated differently back then. Uh, maybe there, there isn't, they weren't counting the closed circuit viewers back then. Maybe closed circuit was totally out of the picture at that time. So I'm not sure. So we only have 400000 for WrestleMania 7, which I thought was promoted very well. You had Hogan in his prime against uh, Sergeant Slaughter, who was a great heel. That was the first pay-per-view I ever ordered as a kid. So the WWF definitely did his job. You know, I, I was really into the uh, Hogan and Slaughter uh, storyline. And like I said, guys, that was very well promoted. Uh, great video packages. Vince McMahon hyped that thing up uh, like you wouldn't believe. He did a very good job of promoting it. 
Uh, but I, I'm just kind of disappointed that that number, 400,000, I just thought it was a lot higher than that. Then we go to WrestleMania 8, and you see uh, 40,000 less pay-per-view buys, 360,000. Uh, I think the problem was, you know, they put the championship on Flair, and I think everyone expected it to be Flair versus Hogan, and then when you didn't get that, I think some people, I think some of the diehard fans kind of uh, saw it as a filler WrestleMania. I think the whole steroid scandal uh, probably hurt it. You know, there, there was rumblings about that Hogan was leaving. I think Hogan versus Sid wasn't a strong, I mean, I mean, looking at the buy rates here, you could come to the conclusion that it was a mistake to put Sid in the main event from a match quality standpoint and from a financial standpoint, you know, so, 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 you know, um, but, you know, I, I don't want to say Sid deserves all the blame, though. I, I think you have to, you have to, a lot of the blame probably goes to Flair and Savage as well. I think Savage's star power was starting to dwindle and, uh, you know, maybe the fans just didn't, maybe the, the WWF fans just didn't really resonate with Ric Flair as the uh, champion. But, you know, the funny thing is when you get to WrestleMania 9, you see an increase of almost uh, 70,000 pay-per-view buys right here. So you, so WrestleMania 9 does 430,000 buys. Um, you know, Bret Hart versus Yokozuna was the main event. You also promoted Hulk Hogan coming back for his first match in a year in a tag team match. Um, so what's the pro? I mean, no, nah, I mean, this was successful. Uh, obviously, people hate this WrestleMania because of what happened with Hogan uh, in the aftermath, how he goes over Yokozuna, and it was just a... Uh, not a good decision in retrospect. A lot of people would agree. But why is this pay-per-view number so high compared to WrestleMania 8? I I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I kind of stopped watching the business in 93 compared to 92. I, I remember being much more into it in 92 as a little kid. But um, the only thing I could come up with is that Monday Night Raw was uh, working. You know, I, I think some people found Raw a uh, weekly episodic uh, TV special that they could keep up with. And they were just more engaged because uh, I think Raw was just a better format than what they were previously doing. You know, I, I can't even remember the uh, TV schedule. It was kind of all over the place. It was like primetime wrestling, superstars, Saturday night main event. There wasn't like that clear defined TV show that you had to tune into every week. And I think with Raw, you finally had that. So may maybe that's why WrestleMania 9's buy rate was uh, so high. Then when we get to WrestleMania 10, <laughs> the WrestleMania that I had a free ticket to, uh, someone down the... Uh, that I used to live by, he um, had a um, birthday party coming up. I actually, I actually took him to a Yankee game in uh, October of '93 for my birthday, and he returned the favor. He offered me to come to WrestleMania 10 with him, and then I said no. I said I'm just not interested. <laughs> and uh, man, did I miss out, man? Because WrestleMania 10 was uh, awesome, as we all know. 420,000 pay-per-view buys. You know, I, I wouldn't say that's that bad. You know, that '94 was pretty much in the middle of uh, the rebuilding stage, right there. And uh, and I'm sure the event did very well on VHS, giving uh, everyone was talking about the Shawn Michaels and the ladder match the next day at school. So uh, we all we all know how successful WrestleMania 10 probably was on VHS when it came out. So WrestleMania 11 does uh, almost a uh, huge drop off, but still not that bad in retrospect. When you think about how bad WrestleMania 11 was, 340,000 pay per view buys. It's still higher than WrestleMania 12. So uh, Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow. I, you know, the, uh, pretty much a failure of a number, um, I would say. It, like I said in the 95 pay-per-view rewind, I, I don't think at that time bringing in celebrities was the answer. Um, you know, Lawrence Taylor was definitely not in his prime at the time. You know, Lawrence Taylor was a huge deal, a great athlete, you know, pr pr pretty much in the Mount Rushmore of uh, NFL players. Uh, greatest linebacker of all time, some would say, probably the greatest New York Giant of all time. But you know, still, you know, that's not what wrestling fans wanted to see at the time, it, and, and it, it just just wasn't working. Uh, you know, Diesel as champion obviously wasn't a, 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 a big financial success by any means, and uh, you know, 1995 was uh, oh, it was just a bad year for the company, as as we all know. So when we get to WrestleMania 12, you have 290 thousand pay-per-view buys for Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. I don't know. I, I, I guess this tells you that babyface versus babyface matches just don't work um, as far as the buy rates go, uh, particularly not at this time. Uh, I, I think also at WrestleMania 12, you didn't really have a great supporting card. I mean, the, the supporting match to this was Undertaker versus Diesel. So um, there we go with that. You know, the return of the Ultimate Warrior was pretty well promoted, too. I don't think people cared 
So there we go with that. WrestleMania. Now, when we get to WrestleMania 13, you have the lowest pay-per-view buy rate of all time, 237,000 buys. Uh, like I said in, in the 97 Rewind, uh, the, that was the one year where the Royal Rumble actually outdid WrestleMania 13. So, you know, even even though Bret Hart and Austin is so highly regarded, no one really knew uh, what that match was going to produce as far as the magic uh, that it gave us. But, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people saw that as kind of like a consolation prize for Bret Hart. I, I did at the time, I didn't really look at it as a monumental match. I just saw it as filler. Uh, I didn't even watch WrestleMania 13 as it happened. My brother ordered every pay-per-view in, in 1996. Almost every one he's, he saw, but I remember he, he passed up on WrestleMania 13. So there you go. You had Undertaker and Sid in the main event, just a not very attractive main event. Once again, uh, there wasn't a clear defined main event. They didn't know what they wanted to do. They, they were clearly, uh, they clearly wanted to do Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels, but Shawn Michaels got injured. Uh, there's some behind the scenes things going on there about Michaels not wanting to do the job. Uh, Vince thought it might have been too predictable to go with uh, Hart versus Michaels again. So they went with the uh, Undertaker, which a lot of people um, you know, thought Taker deserved it. But let's be honest, I don't think anyone wanted to see Taker and Sid in a uh, big man main event. People were happy for Taker, but the bottom line was people crapped on this main event. There's, this is, there's even some rumors that uh, Psycho Sid actually uh, shit it in his pants or shit it in his uh you know his uh his his trousers uh during the match so there we go with that but uh you know when you get to wrestlemania 14 this is the biggest jump in wrestlemania by rate history uh wrestlemania 14 does 730,000 buys that's 500,000 buys extra so you could just see the the beginning of 97 all the way up until austin's uh, confrontation with Tyson, the, the, the business just got uh, huge. Uh, that just shows you right there what competition will do to Vince McMahon when the, when the heat is on. He's at his best. When the pressure is on, Vince uh, will pull out all the cards and he'll come out on top. So, uh, yeah, that buy rate, it, it speaks volumes to how uh, hot uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was, how hot Degeneration X was. Uh, you know, Mike Tyson, star power, you know, coming off of biting Evander Holyfield uh, in the summer of 97. It was, uh, it, it just felt like it was something that was just meant to happen. Uh, so there we go with that. So WrestleMania 15, business is hot. They do 800,000 pay-per-view buys and momentum goes, uh, continues to grow. I think it proved that Rock was a... Uh, uh, a big draw at the time, you know, even some people like Shawn Michaels were questioning, uh, you know, the Rock main eventing WrestleMania 15, but I think Austin and Rock together pretty much, um, you know, proved people wrong with that buy rate right there. I think I think that's a good buy rate at the time. And then WrestleMania 2000 does 824,000 buys. I, I would say that's somewhat disappointing uh, considering how successful the company was in 2000. I think the problem is you have... Uh, you know, a lot of guys weren't really in their prime yet. There's, there's the tag teams and the, uh, you know, Benoit and Jericho and Angle were still, you know, making their way up in the company. And when you give them a fatal four-way, um, fatal four-way matches, you know, they're just hard to promote. They threw a McMahon in every corner. So I, I thought WrestleMania 2000, you, you probably could have got a bigger buy rate if you had just done The Rock versus Triple H. I understand why they didn't do it because Rock and Triple H have faced a million times before. I think there is some, uh, I think, um, you know, there is some skeptical, uh, some people were skeptical that, uh, you know, Rock and Triple H weren't quite there yet uh, as far as star power goes, but I think they proved everyone wrong in the coming months. Uh, so WrestleMania 17, uh, yeah, this is actually the seventh highest uh, buy rate in WrestleMania history. The interesting thing about this list is you see, the buy rates increase as WrestleMania uh, gets older. You know, I, I just think that, uh, you know, they, they really built WrestleMania into a global phenomenon where you just don't have to rely on one main event or one guy to uh, to sell these shows. Uh, but at WrestleMania 17, you know, you had Rock versus Austin uh, and a babyface first babyface match. So, uh, you know, at the time, you know, I think you just had the two biggest stars in the business uh, colliding right there. Austin's return, you know, The Rock got himself up to a bigger level. Um, it's it, it's it just this this match just shows that Rock and Austin together, you know, are just a bigger uh, bigger and and more star-studded combination than a Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart 
or uh, Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. You have to remember Warrior wasn't quite there yet at the time. They were still trying to uh, uh, brand him. And, and Michaels, there was a lot of doubts about whether Michaels was going to be able to carry the ball uh, by WrestleMania 12. And let's face it, Brett, Brett and Sean just weren't on the level as Rock and Austin as far as star power goes. So that's how I would explain that, even though uh, I don't think people even care that it was a babyface versus babyface match. I think the, the whole uh, question about Austin turning heel uh, sparked some interest as well. And on the top of that, you just had a great card from top to bottom uh, it, it, as well. Uh, in WrestleMania 18, they, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge decrease. You know, WrestleMania 18 only does 880,000 buys. You know, um, that's almost 300,000 less. Um, how, would you, how would you explain that? Um, I would just say that the invasion turned a lot of people away. I think the invasion uh, turned a lot of, uh, you know, it, it turned it it turned away like these uh, Jerry Springer, uh, you know, rowdy attitude era fans that were kind of just in it for the seediness of the business, and uh, you know, uh, you know, Rock versus Hogan, even though it was awesome and everything, it it didn't have a lot of build up. I mean, they they only had about twenty seven days to build it up. They started building it up right after No Way Out 2002, so there wasn't there wasn't a lot of time to build that up. Uh, also, the Triple H and uh, Jericho storyline was uh, severely botched as your main event, so may, th maybe that would explain the uh, drop off. And then we have the huge drop off of WrestleMania 19, 560,000 buys. I, I know I talked about this number in the past, but it's really um, it's really a you know quizzical to some people as to why this was such a low buy rate in. Uh, in pay-per-view history, WrestleMania history, I mean, 560,000 buys, that's that's the kind of buy rate that, you know, uh, a SummerSlam or a Royal Rumble would get at the time, uh, not a WrestleMania. So, um, but, you know, the one point I wanted to make about WrestleMania 19, you know, in, in addition to what I said in the past, uh, you have to remember that SmackDown was constantly getting preempted at the time. I, I can't remember why. Maybe it had something to do with the war. That was the first month where we invaded... Uh, was it Afghanistan at the time? So maybe that has something to do with it. But I just remember on WWF Excess, they used to just play the end of SmackDown because so many people were missing SmackDown. And and you have to remember at the time, you didn't really have social media. Uh, you didn't have YouTube. And um, there really wasn't a way to keep up with SmackDown unless you watched the show. And the show wasn't being aired in, in its entirety. So uh, that's a huge problem right there. So a lot of the buildup was pretty much just Triple H and Booker T, uh, Michaels and Jericho. That was probably the best buildups that they had. You know, Rock and Austin was kind of a filler match. It was originally supposed to be Rock versus Goldberg, but Goldberg wasn't ready to compete in time until after WrestleMania. So Rock had to settle for Austin again. And, uh, you know, Rock and Austin just wasn't, you know, Austin was really going through a lot of uh, difficult things at the time. So that that buildup wasn't as effective as it, as it could have been. It wasn't as serious as, as it should have been. So I think that's why you have such a, a, a low buy rate right there. And you have to also remember, Paul Heyman was taken off of TV. You know, Heyman wasn't there to promote Brock and Angle. Um, and they, they were doing a lot of screwy things with Angle being a chicken shit heel. Once again, uh, this is proof that chicken shit heels don't draw money. Because Angle was like uh, trying to get out of the match with Brock, you know, trying to do everything he could uh, not to wrestle. So uh, that that buildup was kind of disappointing as, uh, you know, Heyman was taken off television. I think they took Heyman off television because Brock actually F5'd him uh, leading up to WrestleMania. Uh, so when we get to uh, WrestleMania 20, they do a very good buy rate. One, But, you know... One of the things about 19 is there's some domestic issues. Uh, someone said in the past that this was this that number might not be worldwide or that might have been the last time where they only took the um, or at the time they were just taking the numbers from the United States. So maybe WrestleMania 19 did better worldwide. I'm not sure. Maybe someone could clear that up. But when we get to WrestleMania 20, we see a more accurate buy rate here. It, WrestleMania 20 was actually better than everyone uh then a lot of the numbers led us to believe they actually did 1 million 7,000 buys, which is pretty good, actually. It's not that bad. I, I remember the buildup for WrestleMania 20 was very well done. I think a lot of people wanted to see Benoit win the title. I think Brock versus Goldberg was an interesting match on paper. Uh, Angle versus Eddie was an interesting match. Just, just a lot of good dream matches heading up to WrestleMania 20, uh, where it all begins again. I remember the promotion for that pay-per-view was very serious and very well done. So uh, good stuff for WrestleMania 20. I, I still love WrestleMania 20, even though some people hate the undercard. 
Uh, WrestleMania 21, huge buy rate, great buy rate. One of the top, this is actually the third highest WrestleMania buy rate. Uh, 1,085,000 buys. Um, obviously, uh, Batista and Triple H was very well done. Batista was hot. They made the right decision going with Batista over Orton. Um, they just did, did some really nice creative things. Great build up there. You really, Triple H's hate and his, uh, his heat was at an all time high. So give Triple H credit there. Also, John Cena, uh, JBL, that, that was uh, an attractive match. You wanted to see JBL lose the title at the same time John Cena was hot. So give both those guys credit. Also, Angle versus Michaels is a dream match that had the diehard fans. Uh, definitely wanted to order this pay-per-view. I think Angle and Michaels deserve credit for being draws there. Uh, the first ever Money in the Bank had interest. Uh, Undertaker and Orton, this is like one of the first times where the streak started to become important. So give Undertaker uh, credit there. So yeah, I, I just think WrestleMania 21 has something for everyone, even though the uh, the double main events were, were somewhat flat. It, 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 it was still a great WrestleMania, in my opinion. Uh, WrestleMania 22 does very well, very good as well. It doesn't get the monster number that 21 gets, but 22 still does well. I think at the time, you just had, you still had great talent there. And then you had this influx of new stars coming in, like Cena, Orton, and, uh, you know, they were trying to make Rey Mysterio a new star. So you had some of the little kids coming in. You had the diehard ECW fans still there with uh, Edge and Mick Foley. You had Rob Van Dam winning the ladder match. So you had, you know, you still pretty much had a very diverse and, uh, you know, bloodthirsty audience. But, you know, families and kids kind of gravitating towards the business as well. And then when we get to uh, WrestleMania 23, they do a monster buy rate. I think you had two strong title matches right there. Uh, the Undertaker streak finally becomes a huge deal with, with him going up against Batista. I think Cena and Michaels was a refreshing uh, uh, main event as well. And at the same, you know, you got to credit Cena too. I mean, his, his, his pay-per-view buy rates have been really, really good uh, as far as WrestleMania goes. And, uh, you know, Donald Trump, too. You know, Trump is going to get a lot of the credit for the WrestleMania 23 buy rate. Um, you know, it, it, Trump, Trump wasn't as well known uh, back then as he is now, obviously, for uh, obvious reasons. But, you know, you know, he was still a reality TV star. I think they had The Apprentice going on. Uh, it was a controversial figure 10 years ago, just like he is now. So that that's that created part of it. Yeah, obviously, th this got such a high buy rate. You had non-wrestling fans probably ordering the show. Uh, just to see what would happen. So, so there we go with that. And then when we get to uh, WrestleMania 24, another strong buy rate, 1,041,000 buys. I think a lot of Ric Flair fans wanted to see what was going to happen to Flair. Uh, just, just the whole. I think around this time, you just started ordering WrestleMania for the whole uh, card. Uh, so 24 does a very good buy rate there. Um, I think a lot of people were just happy that a lot of the star power was back in form. Uh, WrestleMania 25, another good buy rate, 960,000 buys. You know, even though, you know, 25 is actually the weakest since 22, but that's still pretty good. You know, so the, the Taker of Michaels 1 does a lot better than Taker of Michaels 2. I, I, I guess sometimes when you see the match for the first time, no matter how good it is, if you've already seen it, you don't really want it. Some people probably didn't want to see it again. Um, how could you explain Russell? So WrestleMania 26 only does 885,000. So that, that, that's significantly less than, um, it's pretty low actually. It's WrestleMania 26 is the lowest buy rate since WrestleMania 18. So, you know, I'm just saying, you know, maybe the, the rematch with Michaels and Taker, something you've already seen before. You don't really want to see it again. Uh, Cena versus Batista. I think some people had already seen that. They weren't that interested in that. Uh, Edge versus Jericho. You know, I, I think that was a little bit rushed in retrospect. Uh, you know, Jericho and Edge were definitely not in their primes at the time. Uh, Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon. I don't think anyone really wanted to see it. I think we knew what to expect. So, yeah, I mean, I like WrestleMania 26. I, I think it's a good WrestleMania considering how bad 2010 was, but uh, just not a very good buy rate there. And then WrestleMania 27, uh, I'll give all the, the credit to The Rock. Uh, does a very good buy rate, over 1 million buys for the first time 
in quite some time. Uh, so 1,042,000 buys. Uh, Rock is the guest host of WrestleMania. Uh, you have an awful card here. I'm not a big fan of WrestleMania 27 at all. Uh, but I'll give Undertaker credit as well. I, I, I think people uh, were really engaged about the streak situation at that time. And then WrestleMania 28 gets 1,300,000 buys. Uh, you know, I, I, obviously all the credit's going to go to Cena and The Rock. They had been building it up a whole year. It was a huge dream match that uh, no one ever expected to see. So um, a, a lot of it has to do with that. But, I, you know, I think WrestleMania 28, I think you had everyone ordering this show. You had, you had people from all eras, uh, indie fans, casual fans. Everyone wanted to see this show. You had a, a, a great dream match, obviously. You had an Attitude Era attraction in the Hell in the Cell match. And then you had, um, you know, diehard, um, you know, fans that diehard fans that were attracted to, like Daniel Bryan and, and uh, CM Punk. Yeah, Punk versus Jericho. And I, I really think, you know, if, if Daniel Bryan and Sheamus got like 20 minutes in that opener, uh, I think WrestleMania 28 could have... Uh, it could have, uh, you know, rivaled WrestleMania 17 and 19 uh, for greatest WrestleMania of all time. I, I really feel that way. But uh, I, I think they uh, kind of took the life out of the crowd with what they did with Daniel Bryan at the beginning of the show, which I still think was a, a poor decision. I, I think there are still ways to get Bryan over without having him get squashed. But um, who knows? You know, some people um, think that they did the right thing on that show because, you know, it's it started the whole you know, WrestleMania uh, backlash the night after WrestleMania on Raw with the the yes chance and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, and WrestleMania 29 gets another good buy rate. I was wrong about this number. It was first reported that WrestleMania 29 didn't do over a million buys, but they actually did. Uh, not anywhere close to WrestleMania 28. So, uh, but at the same time, you had Brock come back. You had Undertaker and CM Punk, which was the last time The Undertaker was undefeated. Um, his last WrestleMania win before he uh, before Brock ended the streak, so that that was probably a huge deal. Uh, I thought you had a good triple main event there. Um, just a lot of rematches there. I, th I think the two rematches were probably the, the reason why the the number went went down from the previous year. But uh, I'm surprised that it was still as high as it was, given the uh, lack of interest in. Uh, Rock versus Cena. Just, I don't think anyone really wanted to see a rematch. I think that was bad judgment, whoever made that decision. But, uh, but here's the WrestleMania buy rates, man. So WrestleMania 28, the highest WrestleMania buy rate. The second highest would have been uh, WrestleMania 23 with Donald Trump. So give Trump credit there. Uh, also WrestleMania 21 did a killer buy rate for that time. And you have to remember WrestleMania 21 that that's quite a big number because you know WrestleMania wasn't quite you know hitting the uh you know stadiums at that time you know they kind of went away from the stadiums and the uh the huge extravaganza that it would become eventually again uh, you know they had it at the Staples Center which you know the Staples Center that's where you have a normal pay-per-view at so I think WrestleMania 21 that's that's really a staggering number if you think about it uh some of the lowest pay-per-view buy rates WrestleMania 12 and uh, WrestleMania 13, you know, just, uh, you know, just proof that the WWE was uh, suffering from the competition. It just uh, was a cool period, even though you had Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart uh, in their prime. But, you know, looking back on it, you could see why there was so much uh, stress and animosity there between Shawn and Bret. I think they were feeling pressure from all angles uh, financially as well. So you you see that uh, WrestleMania 12 does 290,000 buys for the Ironman match, and then WrestleMania uh, 13 does 237,000 buys. Just not not a very good number. Uh, it j j just proof that you need a really clear defined uh, main event heading into WrestleMania when when you don't know what you. I mean, Austin won the Royal Rumble, and uh, and Shawn Michaels won the uh, you know retained the championship at the Rumble. And uh, that's not what you got at WrestleMania 13, not anywhere close to it. They kept on shuffling that uh, main event around, and uh, you ended up uh, uh, really paying the price financially because of that. So so those are the buy rates. Let me know which ones uh, jump out at you. And, uh, yeah, man, so, you know, I just wanted to do something different for WrestleMania um, season here. So here's the buy rates. I'll, I'll possibly be doing the top ten WrestleMania performers and WrestleMania history, uh, that'll be coming. Uh, possibly a WrestleMania trivia game 
kind of like uh, the way Mike Francesa did one with the Super Bowl. It'll just kind of be a fun video. It's not really going to work on YouTube, but it'll just be up there just to uh, have fun with it. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the buy rate video, and uh, take care.